Hello everyone, it's Luke here from 3D Tutor, and we're back today with another 3D environment complete guide. And this time, oh boy do I have a treat for you, as I'm really happy to show you a heavily cyberpunk inspired work. It is a stylized scene of a gas stop created using Blender, Substance Painter, and of course Unreal Engine. So if you're just as into the cyberpunk game and its animated series as I am, then stay tuned as we will take you through an entire process from start to finish. Or maybe you're familiar with the style from other means, like watching Blade Runner perhaps. Anyways, let us know in the comments down below on how you first got introduced to the cyberpunk theme. So yeah, before we begin, if you're interested in how long each part of the environment building took, and what our thoughts on its difficulties are, then stay till the end in which we will give you our feedback of the process and rate its difficulty. The link to the full build of a project for Unreal Engine and Blender files are down below, along with our Patreon link. If you wanted to learn 3D modeling in game design, then there's never been a better time to join our Patreon. Over 300 hours worth of courses, all for the price of a cup of coffee, we release 2-3 to three videos a week and now we have over 20 complete guides along with hundreds of free downloads, like texture and material packs. So head on over to our YouTube channel to check out our content. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification to stay updated with our newest content. Last week we had a modeling guide of a dungeon prop pack showing you a variety of modeling techniques, which by the way we're working on a full complete course which will take you through every single process for each prop to set up. The course will teach you all the skills required to become a professional prop artist and will show you how to create a whole bunch of assets from A to Z, a full type of workflow in a progressive difficulty so anyone with any level of modeling knowledge would be able to follow with ease. And also, we have our content over at Sketchfab, so you can check out all of the complete guides, all of the models that we actually created and view them yourselves. This is great because you can check them out before actually downloading. But anyways, enough of all of that, what you're here for is the guide on how we created our cyberpunk themed gas station. So let's get on with the show. Welcome everyone to our dystopian gas station modeling part and oh boy this one is a long one. It initially started out with a gas pump and I was just going to do a garage but I kind of couldn't help myself and just carried on building. Um, not thinking of how big this scale um, was going to be and basically that made it really hard because in the end we had a lot of work to do to actually finish this project which is not good when you're trying to bring out you know one or two projects a week and we're also in course development so that made it quite hard but I'm pretty happy uh, with the way this turned out so the first thing you see me do here is just create the actual uh, gas station Generally, when I'm dealing with a large uh, scene, instead of just attacking it straight on, I kind of go away, build a small part of it, and then that gives me an overall feel for how you know the rest of the build's going to go. You can see there, to make the pump, all I did was I brought in a um, curve, I uh, then extruded it out on each end and just pulled it up and moved it around with proportional editing. And on this one, actually, I'm not going to um, be talking about everything I went through, so there is a point where you can just sit back, relax, and just watch how we actually put this together. What I did as well for this actual uh, gas pump is, I went away, I got some actual uh, references on some dystopian uh, world building, and um, things like the 1950s gas pumps and things like that. And that's basically where I got the model from. Now actually building this out, the, the actual garage part of this was relatively easy actually. Um, it's just when you're trying to build out the rest of the building that you need to kind of come up with tons of ideas and that's when you need a, a lot of references. You, I probably gathered um, you know, 150 references for this just to get a feel of everything that I was doing. Now when we was building this uh, gas station as well, the idea was to maybe put windows in and have those windows see through and then put a um, you know a kind of texture of the inside of the garage like back to give it that three-dimensional look but I think in the end we just went and we actually just put a texture over the windows just simply because we're you know we were short on time I mean uh, it probably took all told this uh, 20 hours to build or something like that and the video is already long enough I think it's uh, over an hour and a half it's probably the longest video we've ever done but I think you can see where all that work has actually gone into. So when we're building, um, you know, this kind of dystopian look, 
Um, what I'm looking for actually is it, it's normally done with older style um, things and you can see this is definitely like 1950s, 1960s, you know, kind of look. And that's what I was actually going for with, with basically all of the build of this, even down to the buildings that this is sat on. There are some modern pots obviously in there as well and some, uh, you know, great modern ideas but most of it is built around that era. And I think it's important that you stick to the era that you're trying to, um, you know, achieve to give some consistency in your build. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using the insert just to grab all of those windows. If you press that I button, press it once and it inserts the whole um, face wherever you've got selected. If you press it again then, it will actually insert individual faces, which makes it really, really easy to bring in mesh. And a lot of the pause in there is basically me um, thinking about what I'm actually going to do next because obviously it's such a big build so I actually had to really think about which way I'm going to go with this um, and in the, in the end it's like, yeah I should have uh, kept it a little bit smaller. The other thing is you don't want it where um, it's just a straight block up. Whenever you're building anything especially like this, you want to make it look as though people have come in um, and it's a living environment and people have come and they've just kind of built things on to where the top of this building is. You're basically trying to think of a story like kind of behind it. So on this one it was the fact that, um, you know, there's not much space anymore. Um, you know, everything's uh, kind of degraded and things like that. So people are just trying to scrape by and make a living in any way they can. And, you know, they're getting a job and they, they're just going out to enjoy themselves at this particular place. So that was the idea behind it. You can see again, um, I just cut that out with the actual knife tool, so I just quickly grabbed a reference, cut it out with the knife tool, inserted it in, and you can see it looks really nice. I think I had to actually uh, merge some vertices on there with the M key. Now I'm just going in and finding some really nice um, fonts, and of course we're looking for like a, a modern um, sci-fi type font, something like that. So the building, although it's 1950s, we do want it to have um, a kind of, uh, you know, tech font. And again, with the actual struts, although the building is, you know, kind of old and things like that, we do want the actual struts to look more modern, so you can see that's exactly what... So what I'm trying to do actually is just make this look really, you know, kind of high tech, something that's going to hold um, a lot of weight on there. And so right, kind of mixing and matching. So you've got the old style um, mixed in with the new style and that gives you that actual dystopian look that we're actually looking for. As well, when you're actually building these buildings, um, think about how people live there. You know, how are you going to fuel the uh, gas station, for instance? You're going to need a lot of pipes. You're going to need probably a lot of um, stairs and things like that. And basically you're trying to give your um, artwork depth. That's the main thing. If this just was a straight up building with some signs on, it's going to not look nowhere near as um, impactful. And also with this building, we could have took this a lot, lot further as well. And um, we're still basically dealing with a, a kind of a low poly look. Uh, we're letting the textures do a lot of the work, but if we really, uh, you know, wanted to go to town on this, it would be uh, quite nice. There you can see I brought in the uh, Pipes um, add-on, which is the free um, add-on in Blender. It's, I think it's under the um, Primitives menu, and it's called under Extras, I think. It's just really, really easy because it's easy to bend uh, the mesh, so cylinders, easy to bend it in that way. Uh, if you don't use that, trying to bend cylinders to get that angle is uh, it's quite difficult. And now what I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm building the actual pipe that leads to all of these storage tanks and things like that. So I'm not particularly too worried about, 
you know, where it's going to park up, how it's going to pump it in and things like that. I wouldn't worry too much about things like that. I would actually just make it so it actually looks as though it's a living and breathing kind of environment. And with this uh, building a lot, um, I've tended to jump around like all over the place and the reason I'm doing that is because again when I build something I'm actually um, thinking about other parts while I'm actually uh, building the next part and I find that much much easier way to actually uh, work. If I was just focusing on one part sometimes you can get to tunnel vision on that part leaving the rest of the uh, you know the building um, not thinking about it too much and then trying to finding out things don't really fit in and, and things like that so it's better to just hop around the building unless of course you've got you know a piece of concept art you've uh, designed and you already know the uh, the layout of the building you will notice as well a lot of times with these sort of um, environments everything's really bold um, everything's really glowing it's a bit like um, you know um, Yankee Stadium it's it's really bright flashy lights, things like that. I used a fair amount of text on here. So what I'm, what I'm doing is going away, getting some uh, text, making sure that they've got that um, look. But you need to have a, few, a lot of variations on here. Um, the text in Blender is actually really easy to use anyway. And by the way, let, let me know you guys if you want me to cover um, any parts of this in detail that I'm actually doing here. You can see here that I couldn't find um, you know, any Chinese uh, type characters. So what I did, I went away and just made a quick uh, SVG. And you can see exactly how I did that there. Really, really easy to do. And then just to exploit it out. And the uh, Blender has an option then of uh, bringing in SVG. So you can see you can just bring it in like so. And it, it, I think it says uh, food or something like that on this one. And I've already decided like on that where that space is where the guy stood that's going to be a kind of walk uh, restaurant or something like that you know where people can actually come with their flying uh, vehicles park up get out and go and get something to eat so again building the kind of world and thinking what sort of um, places are going to be in uh, you know this environment so You know, bars, nightclubs, casinos, uh, food establishments, petrol stations, just all things like that. Now I've built a few of the buildings, I'm actually coming to the point where I need to think about um, how are the vehicles actually going to work in this world? Although we don't show a vehicle, um, I've already got in my head how they actually are going to work. So I need to plan out then, how are they going to get into these spaces? And of course they're going to be flying, but we need to make sure that um, if you notice any kind of great worlds or concept art, there's a lot happening in the scene. So think of Blade Runner or something like that. There's a lot happening in the scenes. There's a lot of, uh, you know, flying vehicles everywhere, things like that. And it looks very, um, you know, sporadic. You can see on that, what I'm doing is I'm actually splitting that door up and then I'm just um, using the insert tool again and just pulling the parts out with extrude. And before I did that, all I did was I basically got my door, um, I got the lines that I wanted on there, so I, I actually brought in some edge loops. I pressed Ctrl B to bevel them out and then basically I used the eye then to bring them in like that. Really, really easy technique to get uh, you know a nice sci-fi door going. Um, if you want to take that one step further as well, you can of course use the boolean tools as well and pretty much you've got a door then. We're hoping like showing these buildings the way we do it really inspires you guys to uh, you know come up with your own uh, designs and things. And again drop down in the uh, in the links down below in the message down below and let us know what you think of these which one's your favorite things like that and also let us know like what ideas you have for uh, you know any other type of uh, builds we can do we don't actually hear a lot um, about how many types of buildings 
you know you guys would like us to build so it'd be really great if we got that now I'm thinking is um, some underground parking um, I need somewhere to put some vehicles so that's actually one way no it's not actually this part here we have some underground parking around the other side this is actually the garage that I built one thing I wish about this garage is um, I wish I'd had time just to build it out a little bit more you know do the inside with some canisters and some actual uh, tools and things like that would have been absolutely great There you can see I'm actually working on um, signs, so working on different signs, how I want different signs, things like that. And I just put that over to the right hand side, I'm just trying to get an idea of how I want it. And what that led to was me designing this kind of um, uh, sign for um, drones and things like that, because I imagine there'll be a lot of drones in this kind of world, you know, dropping packages off, maybe even walking dogs and things like that. As well in this scene, um, there are, uh, let's say, a lot of technical parts to it. So a lot of the time it looks fairly simple to build things. But building things, you know, exactly the way you want to. So what I'm trying to say is, um, to build this scene, you need a lot of technical experience in Blender. Um, although things look, you know, simple, you need a lot of technical experience um, to build the things. But you also need um, a good amount of experience in building scenes and things like that. Also in buildings, because you're you're building a very complex building here. So I won't recommend it if you're a beginner uh, trying something like this, unless you're really, really going to uh, simplify it a lot. There's too much scope as well to take on. So you know, unless you've really got a lot of time. Um, Keep stick with something smaller uh, and simpler. I actually think, at least for me personally, you know, building um, this kind of style, I find it more difficult. Maybe that's because I've not done it so much. Um, a lot more difficult than building like medieval houses and things like that. I think it's because with medieval houses you can get away uh, with not adding um, so much detail. Um, you know, unless you're building a baker's or something like that. So well, here's our next sign. Again, it's kind of that 1950s uh, look that we're going for. And we did uh, as well take off um, a lot of referencing from uh, Cyberpunk, of course, which is, you know, um, you might not like the game, but the aesthetics of the game are pretty amazing, actually, what those guys put together. Same as Witcher, of course. Now what I'm doing is I'm jumping round to the older building. So this is uh, going to be like, you know, what happened before everything happened. So basically I've just built on top of uh, buildings. So this uh, kind of style is really like, you know, the old type style windows and things like that. And now back to my, uh, again, jumping round, back to my walk house. Actually, this, uh, I would say, was the most uh, difficult scene to work on with Luke. And the reason is because obviously it's me building it, it's my vision, and then he has to go in there and actually add in all of the textures and lighting and things like that. So we had to work pretty uh, close together to pull this one off. You know, what is going to be lit up, what isn't going to be lit up, what is this part, what is this part, you know, things like that. Generally what happens in uh, game studios, if you're thinking of going into that, you'll have some, well it depends how big they are, but normally you'll have a concept piece, then you'll have a, a person that models it, then a person that textures it, and then finally a person that, um, you know, puts it into the world. Unless it's got animation, it needs rigging and things like that, then you'll have another person on top of that. Um, and then you'll have somebody that oversees everything, making sure they're sticking to the um, aesthetic and things like that. So that's how it happens in, uh, you know, in the real world. 
So when it comes to texturing and things, they already have um, some concept art that they can actually go to. Whereas this, obviously, we didn't build any uh, concept art or anything. We just went, got some references and built off that. So, you know, a lot of the time it's up to Luke uh, to actually, you know, create his own vision on top of my vision, which is it's quite difficult to do, actually. So if you are able to do uh, concept art, I do recommend just doing some basic concept art before you begin. Especially if you're working in a team, um, you know, at uni or something like that. You can see there as well, it's uh, using that um, for this, you know, the, uh, the knife tool, cut things out. Um, you know, you can make your own um, logos and things in Photoshop, just quickly turn to SVGs and then you can actually bring them in and do it that way or just bring in a reference like I've been doing and cut it out, insert it in and then just extrude it out, you can do it that way. As well, if you're not aware, you can actually take a line of mesh, so an edge going all the way around and you can actually then turn that into um, a curve um, and down the right hand side then you can extrude it or you can add depth to it and that's also a really easy way to make things like this. So you can see at the moment now we're really starting to pull this together. We're really starting to, you know, bring out the parts and, and put in the places that we want in there. You can see though at the moment it's not got quite as much depth as we actually need. It's just basically a few kind of um, doorways stuck on the side with some signage. We need a little bit more depth. We do have of course the, uh, you know, the walk area and the garage and things like that, but we really need to give it a lot more depth than that. I'm actually making a curtain here. You know, this place is going to be a little bit seedy as all these places are. I wasn't sure actually if we were going to just have this out in the open or if we were actually going to put a window on the front of it. I think we went with a window in the end, which made it quite nice. And there you go, I'm just... I think I'm actually fitting that window on the front of it now. Yeah, there we go, that's called the window, so... Sometimes as well I'll leave Luke with the option of creating a window if he wants to. He'll go into the blend pile then, just add a face on each of those, and then he'll just go into Substance Painter, drop in some opacity over the top of it, and there you go, you've got your window. Again, every single part of this, you've got to imagine where are the people, how they're going to get to it basically, how are they going to pull up. So something like this, you know, it's a little bit like a back alley thing. So you want people just to pull up, run in, and uh, that's that's it really. Whereas uh, the other things like the drive through you know, there's probably going to be a queue of them waiting for the drive through It's not the same thing, so. And what we're doing now, again, as you can see, that little part there has a lot of depth to it. So you've got the garage, and as you come around there, we're really starting to get the depth now, and that's what I'm talking about, so. You also, as well, before you start this, you really want to have in your head um, a vision of the overall um, part. You could see there as well, I actually went in and stole the doors off of another building we did, which is also on our YouTube if you want to see that one. It's the, uh, it's the music one, uh, the music hall. So it's like a Sims, um, City Skyline, Sim City type uh, building. Um, but you really want to have a idea of the overall environment. So in this, we already knew like we wanted it to be dark, we wanted it to be kind of if you imagine the look of um, the machine world in uh, Matrix, something around that sort of look, you know, with lots of fog and things, uh, lighting in the sky and stuff like that. That's kind of the look we're actually going for. You know, as though the world's been so polluted or something. So always having your head, like what sort of scene, it's really important for how you build something and imagining how um, it's gonna all come together. So you can see here, this is a casino. Um, you want it to be a lot more flamboyant and things. And I also know that because, you know, people are going to be walking down there, not just into a door. I need some kind of guardrails and stuff, so I need to make sure I've got those on. 
and in a bit I actually build those. There's a little bit I actually missed out on here, so it would have been even longer, uh, which you'll come across soon. Um, I just missed it out because I forgot to hit record. Uh, but they were so long and you've seen so much of the building anyway that you probably get a good idea. Now on that bit actually what I did was I bought in the wireframe modifier. Um, I also um, uh, actually um, decimated it. So there's a decimate and there's an option of, um, I think it's called Uplaner or something like that. If you click that on and you click the iterations up then it will actually put all of the uh, subdivisions in a cross section. I put it up to three there and then what I've done is I've actually used the wireframe and that's how I've got that actual look. Uh, really quickly and easily. Alright, so the guardrail's done, let's bring some lights in. Again, it's leading up to a scene we want it really flashy and lights and things like that, so. Now this is obviously a huge sign, so it's also important that when you're building um, anything, just to have um, make sure that things are you know structurally sound, that they're held up correctly. You don't want this sign just to be floating there or held together with a couple of um, planks of wood or something like that. So again, now what we're doing is we're uh, creating the, you know, the environment, the living uh, part of it. So what helps the people get water, for instance, and this is um, why we're creating these tanks. We're creating fans on the top, you know, air conditioning units, things like that, because, you know, in a, in a building like this, you can imagine it's going to be very populated. There's probably going to be a lot of people living in there as well. So you do need, um, you know, a way of actually showing that. Now, the actual ladder on here, um, I wasn't very happy with, I'm still not very happy with it. Although it looked pretty sci-fi, I just, I should have done a better job. I think this was at the end of the day and I was pretty tired, so I, I just made a ladder like this and I'm like, oh yeah, that looks okay, and then left it like that, but I'm still not happy with that ladder. Uh, you know, I just made a ladder, brought in a subdivision, and that was it, so. Yeah, that was definitely the next day, as you can see. And sometimes, uh, you know, better to come in and start again the next day rather than, uh, you know, just leave it, so. I think we're coming to the point actually where I actually missed it out, got to hit that record button, so. And again here now, I'm actually giving it some uh, real depth by adding in, there you go, I've just, it's just jumped in now. So you can see I actually started a uh, stairway now, I put in a fan system. So I did a fair amount, probably uh, 30 minutes worth of work or something like that. You can see that as well when you're pulling it out, so if you click E and extrude and then Alt S and pull it out, you've actually got an, an option then on the left hand side if you've not seen it before, which is even, um, even up offset or something, it's called something like that. And what it'll do is it'll even out that extrude, so just have a check that out next time you extrude in and use an Alt S, you'll see it's uh, available there. So this is going to be a lift. Now the problem with the lift is, of course, you've got to make sure that it's uh, it, it's actually a, can go up and down. At the moment, you can see it's stuck in the wall, so that's not going to work. And this is again why I'm jumping around because you know as you're going more and more, you're actually creating more um, complex things, and it's much easier jumping around to fit things in together. There you go, I'm seeing if it actually works, making sure it all fits in, and then I'm pulling it out, and now I can see that it's actually going to be able to go up and down, that's the most important thing. Yeah, actually I wish I'd um, uh, had the lift actually operating, going up and down, I think it would have added a little bit to the scene. Um, you know, we've got a lot of blinking lights on there, but we didn't actually have a lift going up and down. Again, there you can see I'm using the wireframe modifier. 
you can see how easy that actually is. Now I'm constructing the actual um, restaurant. Now I knew on this, I didn't have too much time to create the inside of the restaurant. And you know, when, when we're creating like one or two of these per week on top of what we're doing, um, sometimes we don't get a lot of time. It would have been really great to just take this part. So just this, you know, kind of restaurant and make this as just, um, you know, the building for, for that week or something. That would have been much better, I think, in the long run. So I think these really big scenes, although they look good, um, we did actually a survey that we ran not too long ago, and people definitely wanted smaller uh, buildings, and I think that is the way that we should go with this. Large scenes, they take up a lot of time, and actually they don't probably don't come together. Um, they're still good, but we don't get to add as much detail as we'd like, because of the fact we don't get as much time. So I think in future we're definitely going to be, uh, you know, reining it in a little bit. We could uh, do, you know, one um, uh, smaller build or month and then one big build maybe once every month or something like that. That's also an option that we could do. But something like this again, it means we can only bring out one video uh, per week. We definitely can't do two videos uh, when we're doing something like this. Uh, we've had a few now, like the uh, Pajor, that was also a huge one um, that we did. Uh, funnily enough, even something like the um, desert island scene, uh, sorry, the desert scene, actually that one wasn't a big one because the the, the actual design of it is very stylized, simplistic things, so it's really actually quick to do. Same as the graveyard, really. So what I'm doing there is just adding in edge loops, and then I'm just beveling it, and then I'm using that to actually bring it out. So bevel, insert the bottom of it, and then extrude down. You can see now, just from that view alone, the amount of depth that we've got now in this scene is a lot. And you get a good idea how to actually achieve that yourself now. So we're just carrying on and on and on. Honestly, we could have carried on for another 20 hours with this, just you know, building up more and more and more depth. So I actually put these uh, metal parts in. They were just gonna be metal parts just to break off like the walls and things. And what Luke decided to do was he decided to take those and put actual screens on them, which worked out really, really nice. So sometimes it's better if you don't have an overall vision. So now I'm just bringing the boost to the uh, the actual um, drive throughs You can see there, I got that bevel effect by pressing uh, Control B and then messing around with the shape and the amount of segment. So this is going to be, I think this is uh, a door for a nightclub or something. So I'm just trying to make it a little bit more kind of flamboyant than just a standard door. Not only that as well, when you build scenes like this. Yeah, and this is the, uh, you know, high tech security system. The, the other thing is as well, um, because I built so much of this, I didn't really want to go in and do like little details like this. Basically I was focusing more on the overall vision of it. 
So just like I said, loop wants to come in and just add a little bit of something. I think you really nailed the actual aesthetic of what we're actually going for. For those of you switching over from, let's say, uh, 3DS Max or Maya to Blender, um, well, Luke was in the same situation just uh, two months ago, and he, because he switched over from those actual, um, you know, modeling um, softwares, um, he actually picked it up really, really fast. So I'd say probably in a couple of months, something like that, you should be up to speed um, if you're doing it all the time. So the transition's really easy. I think on a lot of parts of uh, as well, he's uh, really enjoying Blender. Let's say more than um, you know, more than Maya. And in other sections, I would say he's still you know really enjoying uh, you know Maya. But he doesn't use it at the moment. Is my point. You can see he's got a completely different workflow though when he's actually building. He's using the uh, the X-ray a lot to see where things are, and you know sometimes. Um, when I'm watching this, I'm actually, you know, taking on um, the workflow that it has and trying to integrate it into my own workflow because it is, you know, it's different and it is very helpful the way he's doing things. He's just got an overall better, probably, vision of what I have when he's putting things in like that. The other great thing about Luke actually coming in and modeling some of these sections is he gets to go around and see everything. So in other words, um, before he's actually um, took it into Substance Painter to actually texture it, he's already been around it, he's already got a really idea, a good idea of where everything is because sometimes it's much easier to see things, you know, in the actual um, basic view of the modeling section, so you end, end up going around, seeing every kind of nook and cranny, and then what that does is it um, correlates to when you actually come to actually paint the thing you've already got a good idea of where everything's uh, you know going to go what sort of colors and things like that it's going to build up because uh, don't um, you know actually painting this thing was a really big process uh, lots and lots of lights lots and lots of details things like that So you can see there, that was the idea for the actual uh, Wok restaurant. Really, really nice uh, who, who built that. I'm not actually sure, but really, really nice. I would have liked to take that idea, as I said, and just made it on its own, like its own um, building. And I think that's what we'll do, you know, in the future, so. We're on SketchUp as well, so if you want to see our, uh, our buildings on there, that honestly, SketchUp is um, the, probably the main, um, place I go to actually grab references because the references are just so, so uh, complete and good. The other thing is as well when um, you know different um, artists come in and build something on there, they have a completely different approach to doing things. And uh, you know when we tend to build things always the same way. So a fan, I won't, I wouldn't have built it anything like that. He's tend to build it a little bit more dinky, a little bit more thin on the fans. Whereas I'm 
building them a little bit chunky and things you can definitely see there's a huge difference between you know the the art style that we both have so You can see as well uh, when Luke is building, um, he's he's uh, still sometimes struggling just finding uh, you know the way to actually do things, and that's just simply because um, although he does know the way to do things, he's just not he doesn't know where it is in Blender, and that's the only thing you'll find that's difficult swapping from you know let's say Maya to another you know software or something like that. So it's basically you already know like what's available pretty much, and that's half the. Uh, Half the part of modeling, knowing what's available, knowing like the quickest way to do things. For instance, in mine, there's a lot of um, add-ons and things like that you can use uh, to do pretty much anything. That's what that's actually what makes Maya good. Whereas Blender, um, normally they're actually inbuilt, hidden um, somewhere. So you know they're there. You just need to uh, find where they are and how you to use them in Blender because it's slightly different a lot of the time using the things as well. And I do like the supports you put in as well. I think they actually add a lot to the building. You know, the building's really old and that, so they just came in, added some high-tech uh, supports into it, and uh, you know that that'll keep it uh, lasting for another hundred years or something. And uh, yeah, it's a good idea. I like it.
saying that's uh, one problem there that he didn't understand what that actually was but it's actually a lift so you know putting those uh, actual ramps and things in there is uh, not really a good idea because it won't be able to go up and down and um, so I didn't really notice that actually <laughs> it's one one part we've actually messed up so you can see now it's uh, it's back to me um, I can see uh, I'm calling the uh, garage Lucas And these are basically the uh, the finishing touches to all of this. Now we're actually coming to the uh, you know the final hurdles. And sometimes as well, it's good if you are doing a project and you take a break, you know, two or three days, go away, do another project, and then come back and you're pretty much fresh for doing this one, and you have a lot more ideas on it as well. So. So now what I'm doing is I'm bringing in like the final parts, fitting in the final windows, and I know that over a majority of these windows, we're gonna have some big signage and things, because if you think about even today, like there's just advertising everywhere, signs everywhere. I mean, even, you know, back 30 years ago, it actually wasn't like that. So you can imagine in the future, um, it's it's gonna be, you know, like like Yahoo when you first used to go on there and the internet in the old days there was literally just banners everywhere and um, before they realized like that's not the best approach so if you can imagine something like this it's a bit like the wild west and there's just literally going to be banners and you know billboards just everywhere and maybe you know after this in the future from here maybe then they'll get a, a grip on there and you know everything will look kind of modern and sleek and things like that so this is kind of the uh, you know the transition after you know some big event that happened in the world or something again when you're building something like this um, you know perhaps think about a little bit of world building as well on top of that so what I'm doing now is I'm deciding like okay so they're still I'm um, gonna use pretretty much the same kind of electricity and um, but they're going to actually up you know the ante so you can see them printing these big kind of uh, parts on there as though like they've you know made it so they can get a lot more power from those actual um, poles and also it's really nice because we can use them then to actually disappear off sit off, off the actual um, render that we're going to take so that's an, another reason why we did them so the hardest part here was just it was just time consuming setting up all of these kind of wires and things like that having them go into the building but you can see in the end it, it was really worth it so and because they're a little bit you know more off screen and um, we haven't got to spend uh, nowhere near as much time on them um, well not so much time but no more much not as much care actually You know, as if everything goes together perfectly and things like that, so. You can see them dropping it down, so I want to give the illusion of, you know, the telegraph poles disappearing into that pole. Because we already, you know, as I say, we had an idea for the overall um, look of this building. So we knew about what we were actually going for. And you can see now I'm pulling all those wires into place. Once I've got them into place then, I'm gonna think about, you know, will it actually work like this? You know, will somebody be able to come in and, and park their car and drive past these things? And that's what I'm kind of thinking of. So then I move them a little bit out of the way. I'm also thinking about where would they need these, uh, you know, these cables and things. But you can see now it's really, really starting to come together and that's really, really adding to the feel um, of what we're actually going for. And now I'm gonna come in, put in those billboards. And we're nearly at the end of this now, so this build. So I hope you've uh, learned a lot from the way that we've, uh, you know, built this out. It was a long one. Um, you know, I couldn't talk over the entire process of what we're actually doing. Um, 
you know, like the dungeon prop one or something like that. So let me know in the comments below if you guys actually like this approach, you know, with, with little commentary, or if you like the approach of like the dungeon props where it's pretty much commented all the way through. So you might just want to sit back and watch uh, the modeling process, or you might like to have a really detailed understanding of how things actually work. So let us know in the comments below. And if you can also give this a like if you liked it and check it out on Sketchfab and you'll be able to see and have a look around the whole thing and uh, you know just see how much detail we actually went into uh, to build this one. So after this we're going to move on to the actual um, texturing process. As I say this is a long video and then finally on to the Unreal. Don't miss the Unreal part because you'll see how we actually put that fog together. It's, it's multi-layered, it's very interesting how we did that um, and you can see the scene really come together at that point. Also in this, we didn't put in uh, the beveling process, we didn't put in the UV uh, mapping process or anything like that to cut the time down. The UV process alone probably took a good six, seven hours, something like that. Um, you know, it was a very, very long one. So in future, I think we're gonna, you know, bring these back a little bit and not do anything quite as big. So I hope you enjoyed this um, modeling section um, and I hope to see you on the next one. And as I say, give us a like if you liked it. And that's it from me. Thanks a lot everyone, bye bye. Hello and welcome everyone to the texturing part of the video. Now straight away I went in and started texturing the cables of the pole since I knew that I'm not going to be using any type of ambient occlusion or any curvature masks to enhance the look. It's mainly just a pure black type of a look with a slight bit of an overlay for the roughness values. And using triplanar projection just helps out to blend in all of these textures together. Then afterwards I went in and straight up started making out the texture maps. And usually what I like to do is actually I like to start off by baking out a lower resolution of ambient occlusion and just to see how it looks like within our mesh. And actually that's exactly what I did for this model. But the thing is, what happened was I actually got myself a blue screen crash from my computer during this entire process and I lost two hour worth of footage and I bet it's a pretty relatable thing, a pretty relatable situation for most of the 3D artists since that can happen to pretty much anyone and it can set you back with like corrupted files or uh, files that didn't save up properly but when this sort of thing actually happens all you gotta do is just focus on your work like think about it how you're going to make it much better this next time and you just gotta pick yourself back up and just start on getting all the work done and yeah I just did exactly that I was starting off by texturing everything it's it kind of looks a bit rushed at the moment because obviously I was just redoing what I did previously and I was trying to recreate all these necessary textures that I had lost which was up until the brick texturing part for the building and right now I was still continuing on working with the poles I actually managed to get them looking much nicer in my opinion the second time because I got them looking with a sort of an oily type of a grunge texture but they do look a little bit too dark so I did come back later on and just lighten them up a little bit since it all depends also on the type of lighting that we're using so since I wanted to make sure that it looks nice under the night sky I had to just make sure that the poles stand out a little bit more and so yeah I just went in in the future and just lightened them up so anyways, going back to the texturing part, once I started doing the textures for the building for the main area, I actually started off by playing around with a concrete type of a look for the foundation of the building. I wanted to make sure that I get that nice type of a look for the entire material and even if I didn't use it for the main section of the bottom of the building, by making use out of the majority of the mesh and just setting up ourselves a nice type of a small material that makes use out of a curvature and ambient occlusion just to get some nice edges of that concrete. We're able to reapply this entire material onto another piece which is exactly what I did by just applying it to the upper sections of this type of a work. 
And then I moved on actually, I started off by getting the foundation and then started playing around with a brick pattern within the substance painter, which actually looks really nice if you just make use out of it and just apply it as a mask and then set up the fill layer as a height bump type of a material, just to bring those uh, bricks upwards. And then of course that's not going to be enough just to highlight them out of the entire material so we gotta make sure we set up an anchor point which allows us to basically make use out of a curvature smart mask in together with that brick pattern and kind of highlight the edges using color masking and just get some nicer look for the bricks and yeah once i was happy with that uh, i was pretty much done with the entire section for the bricks but then i realized that i need to set up the foundation framework as well and that's going to be in a more sturdier type of a metal type of a look so i was playing around with that and i had a really nice type of a black metal to use and it was a little bit too shiny so i had to take down the roughness values a little bit but once i was done with that i just played around a little bit with some rust just to kind of make it more noticeable as a metal and just to highlight the grunginess of this entire type of a thing since it is a dystopian type of a look we gotta make sure that we get a lot of grunge on our textures and since i already set up a nice metal material i just made use out of it and set it up for the upper sections as well but the downside of using it is that since it was using ambient occlusion, it was actually giving us some really nasty look in closed off sections since ambient occlusion ends up picking all of that detail and just masking everything out. And yeah, I just had to manually paint that out. And afterwards, I wanted to add some additional detail to the metal to make it look a little bit better. And there is a really nice pattern for a metal exactly for this type of the situation or which if you were to apply it, it gives you a really gritty type of a look. And just to make sure I highlight that as well, I just ended up uh, making use out of the anchor point as well within this area, just to make sure that some of that rust goes in between those crevices, in between those patterns. And that turned out pretty well in regards to highlighting that entire section. So yeah, just to make sure I'm getting a nicer type of a pattern, of course, I made use out of a brush in order to kind of stamp out some of the detail myself manually and just to get some nicer control over this entire type of a shape for this type of a noisy metal. So of course, we don't just want to make use out of that or whatever there is a black metal. So we're going to make sure that we're doing some custom type of a work. And once we were done with that, of course, we weren't just finished with the bottom sections of our scene we still had windows to texture out and actually each one of those panels it was really hard to mask it out so i made use out of the symmetry tool and actually the entire building is slightly offset from the center of the building so i had to manually just position that symmetry tool just get it a bit offset and it turned out really well i also made sure to use orthographic view just to make sure that this type of a masking doesn't get any type of artifacts for us on the other side of the building or whatnot so i'm just trying to lower down the amount of areas where we apply the masking wrong listens even though we are using symmetry and most of the building is symmetrical in regards for the foundation we're still going to get those artifacts and so we gotta manually remove that and after i was done with the glass and i made sure i applied a nice crunch i just went over it and checked how it looks like in regards to the overall theme of a building and if it doesn't the mask doesn't go over the edges of those windows and then to top it off i made use out of the ambient occlusion just to kind of highlight the edges of the windows and where there are the build boards they're going to be covered up so naturally the ambient occlusion is going to give us some weird results so we had to manually go in and paint those masks out and then afterwards it turned out quite all right i quite like the overall result so once i was done with that once i was happy with the bottom section i went on and continued texturing process with the upper levels as well it's a pretty large piece in order to texture out like a lot of stuff is made out of multiple bits and we gotta focus on adding multiple materials and it's actually a really complex piece of a scene to texture out as a whole but i was really happy with the way it was turning out i was actually nervous when texturing this because i don't have a lot of experience in regards to texturing a cyberpunk type of a style but once i started going into it i was really happy about it and actually i just finished off uh, watching cyberpunk edge runners so i was actually super hyped up in order to uh, texture all this kind of a piece I got a lot of inspiration from that lighting setup the everything is just that whole show was wild actually watching it don't want to spoil you anything but even if you're not interested in animated movies or animated shows 
I recommend you checking that out. It's quite amazing what CD Projekt Red has set up with that. Even though I played a game and everything, I didn't go with high expectations in regards to the show, but once I started watching it, it just hooked me up so much and I was so happy that I was able to watch such a masterpiece and now I'm able to actually texture that's something of the same type of a style and yeah, I'm not gonna be too much of a fanboy in regards to that, just going to focus on the work and basically a lot of the metal work has to be uh, tuned up a little bit each depending on the type of section I'm working on. If for example it's on a roof surrounded by other assets, it's going to have a different type of an ambient occlusion and so we gotta tweak out those smart materials in order to make it more suitable. So for example underneath the gas station there were some gas tanks and they were really close together so the ambient occlusion was giving us a hard time in regards to the smart dirt mask that was applied onto this metal. So what I ended up doing instead of just uh, removing this type of a mask completely from most of the edges from most of the areas in the gas station in regards to this metal I just ended up uh, customly brushing out uh, that type of a mask and it turned out pretty well. And then afterwards of course for the front section we had to set up a nice type of a gas stop sign and I actually made it uh, look like a metal I made use out of a metal material and I'm not sure if what it was a good idea in regards to the front section of the warning sign so I think it made it a little bit too shiny in regards to that but with the right type of lighting I think it turned out pretty well in the end but yeah going uh, continuing on I just added a basic stamp uh, that's found within substance banner of a flame warning sign and then I just made sure to use a bit of a grunge map in order to kind of remove some of that detail from the mask and make it look a little bit more like it's part of that asset. Then afterwards I went on and started the texturing the pump sections of those areas and I realized that the UVs weren't quite set up just as well for that area. I didn't get enough resolution out of this so what I ended up doing was actually I ended up going back to Blender, I ended up unwrapping all those uh, sections separately a little bit just because uh, I wanted to get more control over this entire area so basically I just packed entire UV chunks and set up the material only for the, gr uh, only for the front section of the gas store and then afterwards once I was happy with that of course we had to continue on applying the rest of the material so working with concrete and metal was mainly the thing and then of course we had to set up something for the frontal section of the store for the gas station so I'm actually making use out of Canva in order to get commercial free license images since of course when I'm working with something like if you want to sell something or whatnot you can't just grab images from Google so I just grabbed those images that are commercial free and actually I wanted to make sure that there is more of a pattern in regards to that so I'm actually grabbing those images onto Photoshop and I'm applying a font and fill and that just gives us a really nice kind of a setup I cleaned up a little bit where I could but of course they're not going to give us perfect types of results but actually we don't need those because we're going to overlay a glass type of a dusty material on top of it and it's going to be barely visible anyway so I think it turned out quite alright in regards to that so once I've got a nice type of a texture I just made use out of that and stamped it out with a paint layer I just used a simple color information I didn't need to use anything else in regards to the roughness and whatnot since I knew that I'm going to have a glass type of a material overlaying with that type of a frontal store section and all in all I think it turned out quite alright the frontal section for the store did look quite nice when I was finished with that but we just had to give it a really nice green tint for it and of course once we're done with that we can now work on the frontal gas uh, pump stations that we had worked on previously before that we had worked on previously before we started our UV changes and then I just wanted to apply a really nice metal I wanted to give it a nice red tint in order to kind of get those frontal panels stand out a little bit more and of course I was using references uh, some images I found from Google and from Pinterest and I just get myself a pure ref and then kind of copy those images into the pure ref itself the program which allows me to overlay it on top of the screen and then I'm able to nicely work in regards to that with the type of a design I want basically and we gotta make sure we just take inspiration and not just copy the entire thing and just make sure that we have in our back of our minds of what kind of entire atmosphere we're trying to build up with regards to what we're doing. So once I was done with that of course I went back to Canva just to get some nice visual effects for the screens. I realized that 
By default, if we're just applying some color information, it's not going to look quite as nice. We need to add additional type of an overlay of VFX overlay. And I got myself some really nice screen effects from Canva to work with. Of course, I made it look a little bit more like a seamless texture, even though if we're not going to be using that, I just wanted to make sure it's going to look a little bit nicer in regards to that. And then for the frontal section, I actually applied a texture that I used for a bus stop ages ago for a jazz type of an environment, which we did previously. I highly recommend you checking that out. It definitely looks really nice uh, with the finished type of a look for a jazz theme music hall. But yeah, enough of that. Moving on in order to yeah, going back to the work in order to make the screen look quite nice. I actually applied two overlays, uh, two color overlays on top of a screen and the first one is just kind of a flickering type of a look and the second one is going to be a type of a depth looking screen and actually going back at it i did make a bit of a mistake i didn't make use out of the emissive texture maps for all of those advertisement boards but it turned out a blessing in disguise actually because what happened was uh, by the end of it you'll see that it did turn out really nice looking in regards to a kind of a holographic screen look which I set it up using Unreal Engine 5. But that's going to be in the end. I still didn't uh, realize that I wasn't using emissive uh, texture map. I was using just a base color, so I wasn't quite as worried about that. And I just wanted to get some really nice color information for those big screens on front of our building. And I just got some really nice sci-fi images and of course some gambling. Uh, it's going to be a type of a look for a dystopian type of a feel. And you know, like addictions and whatnot is just an everyday type of a life in cyberpunk universe. And I think it turned out quite all right in regards to that advertisement. I think it definitely fits part of the theme in regards to that. So once I was happy with that, I just ended up experimenting with the back with the casino uh, sign. And I wasn't quite sure what I'm going to do with that kind of a shape. It definitely looked like more of an interesting shape. It wasn't just a squ uh, square. So I wasn't even sure if I'm setting it up as a type of digital screen or if it's going to be just stamped out type of a detail. So I just left it out for now and just went in and just made sure that the upper screen looked quite nice. And basically once I applied those overlays, I uh, was pretty happy with the result. I think for the larger screens, I just made sure that I add that kind of an extra noise just to make it look really nice once you get a close up those screens and yeah all in all i think it turned out really nice in regards to that once i was done with the sides i just left off the casino and decided to just work on the rest and just come back later once i get some extra ideas on how i'm going to approach that little sign and i just worked on masking out all of those nice letters and setting them up with a misdetection map just to make sure that we're getting going to get some nice glow out of it once we set it all up with a bloom effect within unreal engine and i was really happy with the way they're turning out actually with the way the missingness is just highlighting some of those it just it was finally getting those neon type of a bright highlight colors that you see in cyberpunk and i was really excited about it actually when doing them but of course they're not they don't look quite well just yet because of course we need to apply certain post process to that all but yeah i just left it as is for now just continued working in regards to the small detail i just went back in and out of certain uh, colors certain materials just to make sure that i'm tweaking it all out as we go along basically and make sure that everything in regards to the textures are consistent and as for the patterns for example i just made sure i use trip planet projections where i can in regards to all of that stuff since that makes sure that uh, the metal for example all of that's a uh, little crevices and things like that we're going to get some really nice consistent bump values even if we're using a different material since it is within the same type of a texture space they are also going to give us by default the same type of projection values and that's going to give us some really nice results so the downside of it though is once you see in front of the gas station sign right behind it there is a framework for example and i was using triplanar projection for the rust and that just gave me a type of a pattern that goes through the entire section of that framework which made it look really nasty so i had to go manually and just fix that up then afterwards of course in regards to the neon sides for the lady that's next to the front section of the gas station for the entertainment section we uh, just made use out of a bevel functionality and allowed us to kind of mask out the edges 
using the curvature mask. So once I was done with those kind of details with the main work by the metal for the concrete, I moved on to the back side of the asset and there was a small kitchen area for us to texture so I of course I had to make sure I grabbed some of the food textures and set them up nicely and also in case you're wondering I'm also making sure that I set up all of those textures to be in a square image that way we're able to get some nicer ratio for them since I believe Subspader by default just straight up sees the textures each one of the color information and just makes it into a texture map which is basically just a square so I prefer to do that sort of stuff in Photoshop myself by either extending it scaling it up or just kind of squishing it a little bit myself and just seeing how the ratio would look like and usually that works out quite well and then afterwards I just applied that onto the screens of the kitchen itself I made it look really nice and once I was happy with that I went on to add some additional detail to the bar and just to highlight the overall shape of a table I wanted to add some additional glow a certain neon glow for it and I just got myself some of the edges of those frames highlighted and that, that gave us some really nice type of a look for it but I didn't quite like with the way the red tint was at the very start and I wanted to make sure that this entire area was a part of a certain small kind of environment so i wanted to make sure that it has a blue tint instead so i changed that up and once i was happy with that i went on and i realized that there's some billboards at the very side of the building attached and they weren't actually that as a separate material uh, with the rest of the billboards so i quickly added those additional texture maps and just made them look like some nice screens attached to the side of our structure and it turned out really nice actually and then once i was happy with that i ended up using some of the graffiti that i had previously set up within a decal pack if you're interested in it you can check that out it's a completely free pack for anyone that wants to download and it's set up for both blender substance beta and unreal engine all you gotta do for substance beta is just simply add those as brushes and by just simply clicking on it it just applies all of the pbr materials needed for that brush to work and it does wonders to be honest all you gotta do is just stamp out certain information and it looks really nice once you're done and i just made sure that the graffiti would be in places where it's reachable by people and if, for example next to the screens i wanted to make it look like some uh, daredevil type of a challenge for some people tried to tag those walls and i added like a bit of a cluster in that area and i think it turned out quite all right and then i wanted to add some additional detail just to make it look like there's some hazard and of course safety hazard lines are going to work quite nice for that and of course i made use out of those same hazard lines uh, lines for the frontal section of the gas station as well and that turned out pretty nice i quite like those lines actually so i ended up just adding it all over the place uh, just to Get that extra touch of detail in regards to the overall type of an environment and actually i didn't quite like just a normal type of a setup so i just ended up using grunge mask in order so to subtract that uh, information from the hazard lines and get some really nice blurred out type of worn out lines for them so that i think turned out really nice it was a bit of a hassle to set them up because i had to make sure they're perfectly aligned when i was uh, dragging them out and the spacing between them are set up quite nicely as well and then i realized that i didn't actually end up uh, doing the entertainment area for this entire structure for the building so i ended up just going in and uh, texturing out uh, the leather seats and also setting up a nice fabric for the curtain just to make it look all nice within the area and once i was done with that of course i wanted to make sure that the upper section looks much nicer in regards to the metal that is being applied so i just made use out of a brush to kind of customly brush out some of that crunch detail especially since it was using ambient occlusion most of the generator masks a lot of them gave us the wrong type of results so we had to go in and kind of fix those up real quick but i was pretty happy with that i just had to make sure that we're using a variation of metals throughout this entire project just to kind of split apart all of those nicer detail within our meshes and i was really happy with the way they turned out and now as I, as i said before in regards to the poles i just wanted to make sure they look nicer a little bit brighter because i realized that we're going to use them in a darker type of an environment so we just brighten those up make it look a bit better 
And then I just basically went in, in and out through each one of those areas and just set everything nicely in regards to maybe brushing out certain grunge mask detail or making sure that the overall scale for certain pattern or certain grunge is applied properly. All of it is just to kind of get a nice overall visual type of a look and everything has to make to look like it belongs there. And also, I believe when I was texturing that, I wanted to add some door details because some of them were just planes basically and that didn't look quite as nice. So I actually made use out of the normal stamps provided within Substance Painter. And since it is such a small door, I wasn't even bothered about in regards to just uh, setting up some additional like uh, curvature masks and highlighting some of those uh, details with rest and whatnot. I just stamped in those uh, smaller details and left it as is. It was such a massive project and uh, at this point I was actually quite in a rush in regards to how I'm setting that all up. But even so, I couldn't just leave it as is. I had to make sure I do it justice. It was such a nice artwork. Uh, it was such a nice piece and I had to just make sure I don't screw up in regards to all of its texturing. So just zooming in, zooming out, kind of going through different perspectives, checking how the overall design looks like and I realized that the upper section is supposed to look much fancier so I added some nicer bronze type of a look for the doors and that turned out much much better especially since it helped us to break off so certain patterns for our bar area and actually I think even with the signs I wanted to break off some of those details a little bit so what I ended up doing is actually I ended up just recoloring some of those emissive textures just to change up the color variations and that turned up really nice actually i really like the way it looked since i was worried that maybe we need the, to have a certain type of a color style within our environment some like red tint for example or just go for like bluish neon or something of that sort but turns out if it's a large type of a piece it would be just like that if it's something like for a cyberpunk each one of those signs would try to be as eye catch as possible and they would try to go for their own unique style and their own unique type of a brand color and they wouldn't care about whether that other sign is a same color or not so i think all in all it turned out really nice as most of the colors were just representing their own type of a look and brand for their signs and uh, yeah that turned out quite all right and i was trying to figure out how i'm going to add some additional detail for this type of a restaurant at the top i think i made use out of the font text that you can make use out of within the substance banner and you're able to write out uh, your own custom uh, naming for whatever you want get some nicer designs for whichever type of an environment you're trying to get and i think i actually made use out of a mission uh, map in order to give this sort of a glow a big glow within the screen itself but i think when i was testing out uh, the entire section within unreal engine it had some different type of a look especially for the metal and in regards to the restaurant sign so uh, i did come back during this uh, process for the environment setup and i did get some additional type of fixes especially since the ones i missed like um, i realized that there wasn't enough of a texture density for the front section of a restaurant it was just not giving me that right type of a result which i think would have been fine even if i wasn't doing anything because if i were to change it and upscale it to 4k it would have fixed everything in regards to that but just in case i actually went back to blender real quick and kind of repacked all of those smaller details for the kitchen and that gave me some better results actually i was pretty happy with that and uh, yeah i was just going in and out of the signs as well just making sure that i'm getting some real nice results and just setting everything up nicely in regards to that since that's going to be like the main eye catchy type of a point for our entire setup they're going to glow they're going to be naturally attracting the attention of an eye so we gotta make sure we set them up really nice in regards to that so yeah i'm just playing around with the signs making sure that they look nice i actually go for different views like emissive textures and uh, just mask out the uh, view just to make sure i'm able to kind of visualize the overall type of a pattern the overall look that i'm going to get and while doing this i also gotta keep in mind on what kind of a motion i want for those signs if i want them blinking or not and i'll have to figure that out for the environment setup part 
But yeah, once we were done with the overall texturing phase, we just had to go in and kind of do final touches. We gotta do certain cleanup and whatnot. Since if you're texturing, the longer texture, the more likely kind of mistakes you're going to make. It's only natural if you're just focusing on the overall kind of a look, overall design. You're not too focused on the technical aspect as much. So going in back and forth to kind of clean up certain uh, mistakes, certain areas that would make it look visually better, I think is the way to go. As it also helps you to keep the consistency going back and forth kind of a thing. Anyway, moving on, I wanted to add some additional details for the gas station. So I found myself some really nice stamps of numbers, which are actually completely customizable. So it was really nice to make use out of them and just stamp out a top section of those gasolines. And yeah, once we were done with the numbers, I kind of played around a little bit with the frontal screens uh, with the kind of a bars and whatnot and uh, tried to get a nice kind of an arrow to indicate where the fuel gouge is. Try to make it a little bit more futuristic, but I didn't want to overcomplicate it since it's going to be such a small detail anyway, so I just left it as a minimalistic type of an icon. And afterwards, looking back at the building, I realized that the windows themselves look a little bit too clean, so I wanted to add that kind of a shadowed look. So I actually made use out of the particle brush, which allows us to kind of get ourselves a nice type of a shadow effect. It just splashes the particles on to an area where you select and by just playing around with the values and getting some really nice results i got myself a good look out of that and then i just started applying it throughout all of those windows within this area just to kind of break off this entire pattern and just to make it look a little bit nicer so uh afterwards once i was happy with the mask i just made it go inwards a little bit with a height the layer and then i just i think applied a high roughness value with a black color and that just gave us some really nice type of a stylized shadow for the glass and then in regards to the final touches i did realize that the front and the back uh, or especially the dry fruit didn't look quite as well so I ended up just getting some arrows and getting a kind of a cross at the back as well just to indicate the direction in which uh, people would go in and out, out of this area using some emissive texture maps and I think that just added a little bit of an extra detail towards that area. Then I played around with the roughness values a little bit. I realized that the reflections for the cables are a little bit too much so I actually took off the roughness values by quite a little bit for those sections and uh, yeah I just got myself all of those nice details uh, just made sure that it looks nice in regards to the lighting. So just holding shift and the right click, I was just moving the light around and making sure that it looks quite nice in regards to different light directions. And uh, once I was happy with that, all we had to do is just export everything out. But once we were done with that, we were pretty much ready to go and move on to the environment setup. Alright, for our environment setup part of the video, we actually start our journey within Blender itself because I had to make sure I get some parts broken off for the signs for the ones that are going to be glowing. I wanted to make sure I get them separated in different materials. Even though we're going to be using the same type of texture maps for them, I'm going to be using a material instance and I'm going to be just animating a little bit so they'd be like flashing in and out and that would make it look a little bit more busier even if there aren't any people or cars going around in this setup it's going to look like it's fun a fully functional type of a scene and i think it just makes it look so much nicer in the end so i think it was definitely worth it i didn't actually know i'm going to set up certain signs so i thought like i'll do um, certain letters individually for some of them but in the end i think i just made the signs as a whole to just uh, blink but we're going to talk about that in a bit for now though in order to just bring the entire set within Unreal Engine I actually just brought it up into the level itself just to see how the scale would look like and if everything is just adding up properly together it's just attaching everything to one another then afterwards I set up myself a really simple PBR setup with all the texture maps exported from the Substance Painter and I made sure that the emission is easily controllable with a multiplier. The default value is set as zero. So since some of the emission is not being used by certain texture maps, I just made sure it doesn't give us any type of artifacts when it, be, it gets applied 
onto some of those materials. But yeah, once I was done applying them, I just kind of replaced the original materials with the materials in material instances that I set up. And then I actually went into the blueprint window and I started to set up the entire building within the blueprint itself. Reason being is that I wanted to animate some of those signs and that was the easiest way to do if I were to have all of that from within the sequencer itself. So the way I do it is actually I just select myself all the material instances that I had. I drag it into the selection and I think I tried using construction graph at the very start but I wasn't able to make use out of it because I wanted to use a sequencer and animator that is. So at the very start I actually wanted to make use out of the construction graph instead of an event graph since that just straight up plays everything in regards to the code. I'm not much of a coder though, I don't know how to set up a timeline within that. I wanted to make sure I have a certain amount of control in regards to how the blinking is going to behave. I think for some of them I actually used a random range to change the, up the length of a timeline in the end just to randomize certain amount of that blinking but I didn't want to of course didn't want to do that for every single one of them so of course I set it up in a way which I knew it would work since I'm quite confident in using timelines to just animate certain things so I was quite happy with in regards to how that was setting up all I had to do was just make sure I had the right type of material instances for each one of the areas and I just basically made sure I make copies out of material instances and each one of them, each one of those sign areas would have their own material instance assigned. And afterwards, all we had to do was just go into the event graph and uh, get ourselves the timeline and then play around with the values itself and then just multiply our emissive texture parameter with that value and we'd get some really nice results. And I just made a kind of a jagged pattern out of it real quick. Uh, initially I wanted to make sure I get myself a casino sign which would start like blinking in a kind of a nice sequence but I think that was just like overdoing it a little bit so after I was done playing around with that I actually turned it back to the way that each one of the signs was blinking and it was just going in and out. So. It wouldn't be quite as distracting. I think it was originally a little bit too much in regards to that. And it's hard to say initially how it's going to turn out. So you, certain ideas you gotta try out, you gotta see for yourself how it's going to look like. And if you like it or not, you gotta decide on your, on your own as well. So yeah, once you're done with that, once you're happy with the outcome, then you gotta move on, on to another piece. Or alternatively, you can always just continue working if you're not sure how this piece is going to turn out and just come back later in the end after you have some thought while working on some other pieces but yeah by just applying a simple emissive texture map it was looking so much different it was already giving us some nice type of a glow within our scene and the overall design was already looking pretty nice as a type of a cyberpunk or even digital punk to be honest it kind of turned out a mixture of both although they are genres that are kind of close to one another. Diesel Punk would be more metallic, more gritty type of a look. I'd say almost kind of a steampunkish type of a look. For a cyberpunk, of course, it's uh, more of a futuristic type of a look, more neon signs, more type of a more of a futuristic type of a dystopian look. But yeah, it took quite a bit to set up this entire blueprint. I'm sure there's an easier way to set everything up and kind of make it look all nice. And I don't have a lot of opportunity in working with futuristic environments. Mostly I do some medieval type of a work. It is a complete different type of a work set for that. But I was really happy and excited that I was able to have a chance on working on this type of a project. Now, in regards to the screens, the blessing in disguise turned out to be that I didn't use an emissive texture map for those, and I was trying to figure out how I'm going to brighten them up, and actually, I placed up a simple square light in front of those as a light source, just to see how it's going to look like, and it turned out really great, actually, because it made it look like it has additional depth. I didn't just completely place it flat onto the screen, I actually just faced the screen directly and gave it some distance so now whenever the camera is moving it actually looks like the reflection is inside of the screen itself 
and it makes it look so much nicer in regards to that as it gives us some of that screen type of a glare from them it makes it look so nice i think i added some animation in the end though a little bit in regards to light functionality but we're going to come back to that in a bit uh now i realize that we're going to need to set up some environment aspects we're going to start setting that up before we continue on adjusting certain bits for the scene and i just wanted to get myself a really basic type of a dark look a kind of a nighty look out of our environment although by default unreal engine gives us a way to control atmosphere and you can like lower the sun put it up and whatnot and it affects the volumetric clouds in the background we can't actually make use out of that to just lower the sun because it would give us a pitch black type of a scene so what i like to do is actually i like to just get myself a really quick post process volume make it infinite of course so we'd be affecting our entire world and then by just applying exposure and setting up the temperature to give us a coldish type of a look we're going to get a so much more of a nicer type of a look for the night scene within our unreal engine then afterwards i actually set up a base i wanted to play around with the way the fog is going to be set up so I got myself a water layer, I set up a single water material layer out of it, which allowed me to kind of get a nice transition plane in regards to where the building and the poles get cut off and it just, it just stops all the lighting uh, from going downwards like that. But of course that wasn't it, that wasn't just the right type of a look for our scene since it would still look quite a bit too plain in regards to that so i actually made use out of the volumetric fog as well so i set myself up a real nice and quick material which basically masks out the edges of the fog just to get a nice type of transition then afterwards it adds a 3d noise which actually make sure to not overuse it i recommend you to never use it more than once in regards to the 3d noise because otherwise it'll be really uh, performance heavy to that as that type of noise is just trying to apply a different type of variation of noise in multiple dimensions and naturally that's going to be quite heavy for your computer to calculate so yeah by just playing around with valve volumes i was getting some really nice setup for the volumetric clouds in regards to how it's being layered up and then as a finishing touch of course the base layer that we had previously just kind of ends the entire fog as it makes sure that we don't see through it so i was playing around with the way we're going to be setting it all up and actually i quite like this fog but um going back to the references and seeing some of them some of them look really smooth type of a clouds and some of them are actually more detailed so i think i ended up uh, setting up a more detailed type of a look in the end by applying a certain plane on top of it and just getting some noise texture to be covering the top and also the downside of using this type of a volumetric fog was that it would look a little bit too repetitive so i think i ended up changing that as well so yeah once i was happy with the base of the environment i just wanted to start building all the light setup within our scene and i was just playing around with the volumetric setup as well of course to make use out of the volumetric lighting we gotta make use out of the exponential height fog which is by default set up within our scene and within it, within its parameters, there's something called volumetric fog, which if we were to enable it, will allow us to make use out of those volumetric fog functionality. So even if we are setting up lighting, we're able to get some really nice volumetrics out of them. And now within the lighting itself, there is volumetric parameter, which if we were to increase it, we always get a certain volume out of our light. And depending on where the light is for example depending on how the big the light is i always adjusted those and made sure that they're set up properly within the scene so for example in the grittier areas we're going to get more of a volumetric light and in more of an indoors areas there'd be a bit less of that but yeah most of the work since it is a night scene since it is a cyberpunk type of a design we gotta make sure we set up all of those lighting properly and actually even though certain areas don't even have like light bulbs or whatever like by the doors i still made use out of the light sources just to highlight some of those doors and make it look much nicer 
and I just made sure to hide it behind an edge and that just makes it so much nicer visually and afterwards I realized that the bottom doesn't look quite as nice it doesn't look like it's placed in a certain height so I actually made use out of a large light source and placed it right underneath our entire scene and that way I just lit it up from the underneath just a little bit and of course I made sure to adjust the light source of the sun as well a little bit just so we could get some nicer shadows coming from behind and so we could see those shadows coming onto the volumetric fog itself which I think turned out really well so once I was happy with that, I was playing around with the fog of trying to figure out whether or not I still want to make use out of a softer type of a fog or whether or not we want to make it look a little bit more gritty and the volumetric fog by itself by default with just a simple 3D noise doesn't quite cut it when you're trying to add certain amount of detail and it just looks a little bit too much in regards to the way the pattern is lace so it's actually playing around with the overlays of like base colors and whatnot and trying to uh, trying certain techniques in regards to how i'm setting that one up but at that point i just kind of ran away from the problem i went into the post process volumes and just played around with the color grading i wanted to get out those nicer colors out of our entire section and just make it look so much nicer in regards to how our environment is being color graded basically the way the shadows are contrasted and the way our neon lights are glowing within our scene and while doing the post process uh, effects i realized that some of the screens aren't glowing quite as well the smaller ones especially so i just added some additional light sources for that and you can see that some icons for the light sources are actually crossed out because within the real time they get blocked off but since we are using lumen global illuminations that doesn't seem to give us as much of a trouble seems like most of our lights are working and since it's based on which way our camera is being placed it doesn't it doesn't show up as anything troublesome all the lights seem to behave just as expected then afterwards i realized that the screens might need some like glitchy effects so i actually just use that type of a screen overlay that i use within substance painter i applied it onto the textures directly and made them pan a little bit and just wobble a little bit and that gave us some really nice kind of emotion some casual flickers that go in between the screens and i think that turned out quite nice so yeah i was pretty happy with that and all in all the entire scene was finally coming together all the lighting the neon lights all the advertisements were finally looking like a cyberpunk type of a scene the entire setup just makes me feel like i want to play the cyberpunk game again and maybe i'll give that a go sometime in the near future i don't know about re-watching cyberpunk animation itself it was too much of a feeling trip so i don't think i'll be watching that anytime soon but yeah this was definitely giving me that type of a cyberpunk vibes but yeah this was definitely giving me that type of a cyberpunk feeling and i was actually even listening to cyberpunk uh, soundtrack while working on this and it was just really enjoyable experience and yeah i'd love to know if it was just me or it actually gave those type of a vibe or at the very least an atmosphere that's similar to a cyberpunk so yeah let me know what you think in the comments down below if we succeeded in that and yeah, going back to the fog i was quite stuck i wasn't quite sure what i'm going to do so actually what i ended up doing is i ended up getting myself a different type of a layer with a fractal noise which allowed me to kind of blend in those fog textures nicely and i think i used a gradient radial exponential which allowed me to kind of cut off the off the platform i didn't want it to be too much visible in the back so i actually just made use out of the mask for that and then I wanted to think on how I'm going to layer those materials together and I realized that for the bottom, for the base of the water layer that we had which acts as a kind of a blocker, a cloud, it looked a little bit too plain so I actually ended up using a normal texture map for that and uh, if we were to be using that throughout the entire texture map it would have looked way too repetitive so I ended up actually just using exponential gradient for that but because it was a normal map we can't just use a multiplier just to lower down the value so we need to use a low value with a vector free set as just a blue color and that way we're able to kind of cut off all the edges in regards to the normal map so that was a way i took care of the base for our cloud system then of course afterwards the detail out of the fractal type of a noise 
with some padding movement it just gave us some real nice results but we weren't quite done just yet in regards to that of course we made use out of the volumetric fog just a little bit just to soften up that transition between the fog layers and that gave us some actually really nice results in regards to that and uh, one more thing in regards to the fractal noise i made use out of the death mask and that gave us some really nice transition for the fog it gave it a little bit more volume in the way they are transitioning with the object that we have within the scene so yeah all in all i quite like the way the fog turned out i quite like that type of a design so after all of that the only thing that was left basically was just to set up some cameras but i'm not gonna bore you with that since it's pretty much more or less the same type of a setup in how we do it in the rest of our videos and the video itself is already long enough so i think we're going to end it here something worth noting though is that because it's a more of a vertical type of a scene there are some shots that are climbing up vertically instead of just us just having some arc shots so it's maybe a little bit different presentation wise but so yeah that's all it took in order for us to set it all up now that we're finished with it all let's go ahead and review the entire process and here's what neil had to say about modeling section for this building this time modeling was perhaps the most difficult we've taken so far all in all it's a complex build with a large scope and the total time for modeling took around 15 hours to complete this is for a few reasons. Firstly, the actual build itself is not something we do a lot of. In other words, the aesthetics and art style is a little different from our normal stylized medieval type of art that we do. This means that the build takes a bit longer as we're not familiar with things like structures and its parts in regards to this type of cyberpunk art style. Next is the shared scale of the build. We have learned from the scene that in particular, we need to rein things in a little. I think in the future it's better to make smaller, more compact scenes like our dungeon props as this makes for shorter, more compact content. Lastly, the amount of technical knowledge within Blender to attempt this scene is, I would say, certainly not for beginners. There's a lot of complex parts and you need to have a very good working knowledge of Blender to pull this off. I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10 in terms of difficulty as the only reason it isn't perhaps a 10 is because we did not create a higher poly meshes which of course would have added perhaps like 75% more time in regards to building this entire scene. The texturing part took 6 hours and 29 minutes to do as this project was quite a big one and I had to spend a lot of time to get all the detail consistent throughout the project. Honestly, if I had more time, I would have added so much more to the custom detail of this work as I absolutely loved working on this piece to texture all the little parts. Each side of the building had a unique part to it and we had to paint it all to make sure that it all comes together nicely. But all the good things come to an end and we had to stomp our foot down and say enough is enough and we had to move on and take our assets to the next stage of the development. Which is quite alright since we get to see how all of these textures come together. But during the texturing process, I had to set a lot of knowledge for more technical ways of texturing like setting up anchor points for metal and brick patterns within our smart masks to make sure we highlight some of our custom bump map information. We also had to make use out of customizable substance alpha stamps to get some of that smaller detail within our building, which if you don't know how to customize your brush settings might be a bit confusing for a beginner. Uh, speaking of brushes, using color information overlays to set up the screens might seem easy, but that also requires a certain amount of knowledge on how layer information get applied on top of each other. There's also a neon sign work which using emissive texture maps might be a little difficult for a beginner to visualize as it requires some strength tweaks in the post process after the texturing stage to fully grasp on how bright each color information is going to be applied and how it's going to affect the scene. And finally, the consistency of detail is something that is quite hard to achieve for such a big piece. We can't just simply apply an ambient or curvature generated smart masks and hope it'll give us great results. There are places with indoors and outdoor sections and we have to manually go in and out for the material masking to get the proper results, which might seem easy, but it takes a lot of practice within 3D texturing to make it look good and make it look like it's part of the scene. So yeah, all in all, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10 in terms of difficulty as it was quite complex piece of texture with a lot of technical knowledge required to work on it. Now, as for the environment setup, it took 4 hours and 27 minutes to do as there is a lot of after work required to get the right type of cyberpunk atmosphere. The first and probably the most obvious one is setting up the lights. 
in order to make it look good within the scene. I had to set up some flashing signs for animations using Blueprint system which was a tedious work or setting it all up to not make it look repetitive but not completely random either. Also, we had to make sure that the bloom is set just right to give it a nice glow for the mission in map which, fun fact, beginners always tend to overdo. Hopefully though, you don't think I overdid it as I don't have a lot of experience working with neon signs. But yeah, it's all in making use out of that bloom post-process effect to complement your work and the structural shape of an asset and not to just overwhelm it. Nevertheless, pretty glowing lights are always nice to look at. Some of us are like moths and always crank that up to 11. And uh, afterwards, there is a lot of work with the light source creation and making use out of them with the combination of volumetric lighting to get some nice light shafts within the building which requires a lot of very delicate tweaking to get it right. Then we also have the overall atmosphere setup for the fog within the night scene, which took me a lot longer than I thought to set it all up as I wasn't quite sure if the scene needs a simplified design or a complex gritty type of a fog with some noise on it. And I ended up going with something in between, combining volumetric fog, single layer, material and some translucent planes on top which i think ended up looking quite nice so all in all i'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10 in terms of difficulty as it was a rather complex piece to set up so yeah i really hope you enjoyed the video for a cyberpunk stylized environment made using blender substance painter and unreal engine make sure to give us a like if you did and don't forget to drop a comment down below of what you would like to see us do next also, check out the links down below to see a massive library of courses we have available, which are free to anyone that signs up to our Patreon. We are currently working on a brand new course, and oh boy, it's a big one. The course will teach you all the skills required to become a professional prop artist, and will show you how to create a whole bunch of assets from A to Z, and it's going to be a full workflow in a progressive manner. Then finally, we also have some free goods in our Gumroad, things like texture packs and some models for anyone to download. Which, speaking of, we were using a decal pack during our texturing phase, which is actually free to anyone that wants to download. And it's going to be on our Gumroad, so please go ahead and check that out. So yeah, that'll be all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.